know I obviously skipped like a huge chunk here. The laptop's back together and the new motherboard actually worked. I got everything all hooked up. Really the key is if you're going to work on, on this thing, uh, on any of these laptops, uh, whether what I'm showing you exactly matches what you're doing or not, just taking it slow, looking for the hidden screws. Um, when all the screws are out, then you pry very carefully and things will come apart. What you can't do is get in a hurry or get frustrated and start ripping things apart because it will destroy what you got. So I was careful, I was patient, and I got it back together. But with this new motherboard in this laptop, you know, everything's working great now, but turn the thing on and uh, you're going to see something here that's interesting. You see it boots up and it comes up with a screen. The following product information programmed into the system board is missing or invalid. And it gives you the list there and it basically says for more information go to that link which doesn't have anything there about what you need to do. Or you hit enter and it'll just go ahead and boot up like normal. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and kill this. So what I found searching online was that uh, this is pretty standard protocol when you place a motherboard in an HP laptop. And the, I guess the trick is, you know, I'm fixing this for one of my wife's friends, and it cost her 230 bucks for this new motherboard. And uh, I guess what HP wants you to do is after you get the motherboard in, they want you to take it to an authorized HP service center where they charge you $50 to input those items in there that they said that the motherboard is saying are invalid now. So that's crazy. I did a little searching online. I found here the solution which I'm, I'm going to try right now um, this guy's uh, had it definitely the cleanest on his blog um, I don't even know who he is 14phoenix.blogspot.com uh, and this cat you know the same problem that I'm having and he basically the solution is this you take a thumb drive regular thumb drive, doesn't have to be a huge one. Um, you're going to format it to be a Windows 98 disk and on his blog here he tells you where to go to do that. Uh, there's some tools out there. I, I didn't use exactly what he said but I kind of had my own way to do that. Uh, but he points you to a, a tool called Rufus where to format it into a Windows 98 thumb drive or I'm sorry boot drive and then uh, you download this file, it's another program, hpbq138.exe. And I guess this is the utility that they run. If you take it into the HP Service Center, it's the same utility they run. And they charge you 50 bucks for it. So I'm going to try it now on this thing and uh, you know just see what happens. So I'm going to power this bad boy up. I'm going to hit escape a couple times. And you still got to hit enter and go through that, but now we're going to go to uh, boot device options, F9. We're going to go to USB disk. And then bam, Windows 98. Man, I love that. Good operating system. Anyway, so now what he says to do on here is to type in the name of that executable hpbq138.exe. Boom, look at that. HP Confidential. Well, not anymore. EEPROM utility version. So this is obviously something, uh, some sort of HP uh, proprietary tool. Well, joke's on you, HP. I'm not spending $50 to freaking take this thing in there. So, all right, basic menu. On this guy's, uh, on his blog here, he, he basically gives you the rundown of where to find this stuff. The serial number is it's on the back of the laptop and I have that written down here so I'm gonna enter zero for my choice okay save to EEPROM enter All right. um, notebook model the model number on the back it's gonna be DV7-3160 oh, yeah. US Oh, and it gives you some examples down there. Yeah, whatever. That's close enough. Enter. The GUID number. He says to put one in random. 
Actually, that looks pretty random to me. So, so enter the UUID number. He says select one to generate a UUID. Okay, selection is one, generate UUID. So, we're going to hit one. And there you see the number change. Save the EE problem. So he says SKU is the product number, and the product number is on a lot of this stuff is on this back label here on the bottom. If it'll focus on it. Yeah, so you got serial number, product number, model number, all that stuff's right there. So on this one, I'm gonna put in uh, <clears throat> Um, okay, looks like I took that. CTO localization code. Oops, last three letters, ABA. Uh, I already used it on the other thing, but who cares? Okay, MAC address. Oh, looks like it's in there. Uh, and then the PCID. So the PCID, uh, depending on the form you go to, looks like it's really tricky to find. Um, this guy here says it should be located underneath the battery. And that is indeed where I found it on this laptop. And that is it there. It's upside down, but you can see it. Um, so a lot of people said they even called HP to try to find the PCID. HP won't help them. So if you're working on one of these, it's more than likely underneath the battery. Okay. And enter. System board CT number. It says uh -huh. blank. Okay. Okay. So I am not going to mess with that other stuff. Save the information and reboot. Save EE prompt file. Yes. Okay, and uh, we're going to hit exit program. Now, we're going to shut her down. When we start this bad boy up, hopefully it will bypass that, that stupid screen where it said everything was invalid. And yes, my shirt says, loading sarcastic comment, please wait. Okay, we'll start Windows normally. That's a good sign. Hey, look at that. It bypassed it. Perfect. So, anyway, if you got any questions about replacing the motherboard on one of these, um, just hit me up, send me an email, throw something in the comments or whatever. Um, but this guy right here, Mr.14phoenix.blogspot.com, uh, he makes that really easy. So thank you for that, whoever you are. And good luck with it, guys.